Please, Lemon. Yeah. I don't like him. Sorry. <laughs> so, <sighs> He's been waiting to say that the whole time. <laughs> Didn't know he had Oreos. Lemon. Didn't know we had Oreo snobs with us. I didn't realize you could ruin Oreos. <laughs> you don't like lemon? I already told you this. <laughs> you know this. What makes a good cookie? You don't think about lemon when you stay in that state. Yeah. I do. Lemon is meant for ice water, and that's pretty much it. If it's like a, a big glass of ice water right here. <laughs> all your all dry and crunchy. Crunches your thirst for the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a tall glass of milk you need to have with them that quenches the thirst. Buffers, buffers. <laughs> You done eating Oreos? I'm done eating my Oreos. We're ready. My bow's hungry, it's ready to eat.
Now we're back in the same area we hunted last night. We had a couple bugles last night, so we're driving the logging road around, stopping at a couple vantage points and bugling. But realistically, we're just trying to get back to the far ridge where we had the bull responding last night and hoping he's still there and we'll go up after him. If not, there's a bunch of country from the end of the road on around that we'll hike into if we don't get anything to respond. But smoke's not as thick this morning. It's still smoky, but feeling good. It's a crisp feel in the air. Yes. Donnie's got a dad joke already. <laughs> Put you on the spot. What is it? Oh. Last night, Corey was helping his daughter out with some graphing math issues and there was a bunch of negative numbers and negative numbers kind of scare me. I'll, I will stop at nothing to avoid them. Let's go hunt out. <laughs> What's playing? hiking, bugling, and packing. We just haven't been doing a lot of packing elk. Yeah. Because we haven't been doing a lot of shooting. It's quiet so far, but we're just over the ridge from where we were yesterday where that bull came in. There's, he was bugling and then there was another one bugling on past him, so get up over the top here and see if we can get him to respond and come into us. That's all you got to say? Yeah, that's all I got to say. So we kill now.
the cows that we were hearing down here on the opposite side. They walked up and they were standing on the corner of the road. So never did see him until he came up. Yeah. It's just it's good over there get on that road. The wind's good. He's got to be going down to a wall or something. Then he's going to go up where the cows are. Yeah. Maybe we can even get up above if the wind's good. Kind of follow the cows. Beautiful. He's going to thank another bull. 
side of a ridge just in case something swirls so we might wait here until 6 30 they might fire off in a half hour don't know but we're not going to push it today we pushed it a little hard the other day and just want to make sure they're ready for us when when we go in so i think this is where the party's been going on all morning we heard a ton of bugling up here in big mature sounding elk so if we have to wait till the party tonight that's what we'll do Bring the party with us. That's right. We'll take the party to them.
there's a bowl down lower, one around the next ridge. So we're going to go about mid-mountain when the thermal switch. We should be at a good level just to drop right under them. Start a party. Center body, broadside, broad, um, quarter and two, shot him behind. Um, here, uh, he was on the road. Yeah, Where are we at? Right here. Yeah, 30 yards, 40.
back there where it looks like it came out of that. And there's these heavy ones that are headed kind of this way. Just looking on the video camera on the little screen, it looks like it's quarter and two. And right as the shot got there, he kind of turned and it hit tight behind the shoulder there. But we'll have to see what the angle was that it went in. If it got good angle going across there, as high as it was, it's high lung, most likely liver, back into the stomach there. So shouldn't be a problem, but liver and high lung on one side can take a couple hours sometimes and he was on a full speed run for 400 yards like didn't even slow down so there's not a drop of blood anywhere and it's just powdered dirt so soaks it up pretty quick but we followed the track door he started going down into the brushy draw which is a good sign that he's going downhill down into the cool down into the cool draw Elk is still bugling. And uh, if we were to bump him tonight and he was still alive, he could go another two miles and not leave a drop of blood. So as hard as it is, the right thing to do in this situation is just back out, wait for daylight and come back in. And give him the time he needs to bed down and expire. And hopefully he's just right around the corner from where we stopped. You say we've gone six miles so far today? Six miles from where we turned around. Now we're turning around and heading back. We went uphill, we went downhill. We... <laughs> uphill both ways. Yeah. For as hot as it was, I couldn't believe how much snow there was that we had to plow through. Yeah. Luckily, this draw is a really cold draw in the mornings. It's cold right now. It's down below. It was 30. Oh, yeah, it was less than 30 this morning, the bottom. Yeah. So, not worried at all about the temperature. It's getting hot during the day, but right now it's 56, 58, somewhere in there, and it's dropping pretty rapidly. In the morning, it'll be below freezing. So, no worries there, other than just the uncertainty of whether we'll find him, whether we'll find blood. Yeah. We'll find him. We always do. Yeah. We'll look all day if we have to. Totally. Yep. Okay. I'll be back at daylight. We're heading in to see if we can start tracking Donnie's bull from last night. We watched the video and he hit back a little farther than we thought and the bull world. Pretty confident that it's a fatal hit, but not going to be much blood. So hopefully us backing out allowed him to go and bed down and we'll get into that cool draw and He'll be laying right there, so fingers crossed. Go down there and quick recovery and brutal pack out. So, I was walking along this road here. Corey's down below me, down there. 
and I just came up on that. <laughs> so, we found Donnie's, or Donnie's bull. I found Donnie's bull, it's kinda cool. There we go. We've got another one done. Another one. We had to uh, combine a couple days into this one. It's so smoky. Like that, that first morning was probably the smokiest morning we've had. And visibility, yeah. it's horrible. 100 yards? Like you cannot see across the small oh, drainages. Yeah. Totally smoky. But yeah. we, uh, Got on that bowl on the skid road, hiked in, and it was quiet, wouldn't bugle, and then come around the corner, and there's a cow in the middle of the road and kind of pinned us down. Yeah. Once we uh, were able to back up there, let out a cow call, and the bull started bugling. Yeah. I was hoping that he was going to go around and come out right in front of us there and give us another frontal, but he was not very aggressive, and... Had a couple of cows and a, one little calf. And... Yeah, it's just odd how, so that bull, that, that five point, that morning was just completely timid. His bugle was very short and just kind of growly. Didn't want to fire up. The next morning we went back to the same area yeah. and that same bull was fired up and screaming, like chasing yeah. the cows. We were on him for two or three hours there and all morning all morning kept following him as we followed him up the ridge we kept hearing bugles off in the distance and he led us to the party yeah so yeah, well, and that's where it happened we got to see donnie's <laughs> reaction just after the porpoise over in wyoming two years ago the reactions have just kind of been a letdown yeah i was a little worried on that one just because yeah. i could see it the camera didn't catch it, but when he ran over and he ran across the hillside, you can kind of see a flash as he runs across there. As I mean, it looked like an antelope running across the <laughs> desert. It was just trail of dust kicked up behind him. And I was like, Ugh. I knew it was a good shot, but I didn't want him to run that far. Yeah. Well, and that's just, you know, we knew the shot was back a little bit because of the angle. And uh, it was right before dark. We tracked for maybe 20 minutes before we really started running out of daylight. And those tracks were, it was a track in the dirt, like a big skid mark. 20, 25 feet away the next one. He was just full out sprint. Luckily he was on, a, on one of the skid roads and just followed the skid road. But it got dark and we didn't know where, because he wound up, going off the skid road and we didn't know if he was just standing off down there below us so knowing it was a little far back we we decided to back, back out and that's it's always a yeah. you know it's hard to hard to decide sometimes but i think that's today's strategy for success uh that's brought to you by the rocky mountain elk foundation is when to leave that bull overnight and when to keep tracking and i think in this case uh, he'd been shot back a little bit, so we were thinking potentially liver, 
Um, definitely, you know, one lung, but at that angle, uh, probably got back in the body cavity, and it can take them a couple hours. Sometimes, I mean, I I found elk the next day, twelve hours later, still yeah. alive with those kind of shots before. So, the last thing you want to do, we didn't have a drop of blood uh, up to the point where we stopped, not a drop of blood. Uh, he's running full tilt, and if we were to to push on and jump him, he can go a long ways with no blood and if he didn't stay on the skid road and we didn't have a track, it'd be almost impossible to track him. So we decided to back out. Uh, one of the factors that gave us confidence was how cold it was. It was, uh, that draw particularly was really cold, but it was getting down, you know, during the day it was still getting up into the 70s and 80s, but at night it was getting down into the 30s and 40s. So no concern about leaving him overnight uh, as far as the meat was concerned. Uh, so just the, the risk was high of bumping him, the risk of the meat going bad was low, and we, we made the decision to back out, which turned out to be the right decision. Yeah. So, uh, it's, you know, in some cases, I think that, you know, if a, a rainstorm's coming in or if it's raining, and you have the, the risk of losing the tracks or the blood because of rain, that would be an instance where you'd want to probably stay on the track and keep tracking it. Uh, if you hear it fall, you know, it's okay to, to go after dark. If you hear something that makes you think that it fell, if it's bleeding good, you know, there's a little bit less risk of losing the, the, trail. the trail if the bull, if you bump it, uh, if he's bleeding good. Uh, so a lot of things you just have to kind of weigh out uh, if it's getting hot at night or not cooling off at all. You know, you might stay on the trail knowing that if he died in an hour or two and you didn't find him for 12 hours, the meat might be bad. So all of those things to consider in this case, I think it was a pretty easy decision. Uh, it's, it's never an easy decision. I know uh, Donnie was yeah. up half the night just worried about Always whether we'd find it. a long it. night. Yeah, but fortunately we found it fairly quickly. I would, would it take us 40 minutes, 45 minutes yeah. uh, getting down there? Dale found it. We'd kind of split up and fanned out on the hillside of where we had known it had kind of dropped down in there and coincidentally had walked the skid road and it looked like it fell over standing on the skid road right yeah. there so yeah meat was all good yeah. and uh the baku bike came through again we we actually hiked in there that morning and uh because of where we were we went back and got the bikes at the truck and brought them in there and were able to put it on the trailer and ride it out on the skid roads the whole way so two good pack cuts yeah using the bikes <laughs> yeah full elk on the trailer yeah but i think uh part of the reason people come and watch the outro here is to see what we're going to give away so especially on a kill day <laughs> yeah we've got the four daily giveaways today and uh what did you decide to give away a bow a bow, prime bow, another prime another bow. Prime bow. Are you gonna make them take a left-handed <laughs> bow, or are you gonna give them a choice of a left or a right-handed? Yeah, just flip them upside down. Just flip All it upside. Right. <laughs> no, you can have a left-handed bow or a right-handed bow. Another prime nexus or black. Nexus or black. Just let us know which one you want. Yeah, maybe leave that as a comment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just comment below. You're automatically entered when you leave a comment down below. So today's episode, there's five winners, five giveaways. And uh, don't forget yeah. yesterday in uh, the episode where I shot my bowl, we gave away a Baku bike and a bow. But today only, only get a bow. If uh, you're watching this tonight and you didn't watch yesterday's, now you know that you can go and comment on yesterday's and be entered for two bows yep. and a bike. So comment on every episode. Every episode are different giveaways and we're not giving them away. We're not picking the winners until the end of the Destination Elk series. So if you're watching episode 24 and that's the first one you've caught, you can go back and comment on all of the episodes and be entered for those. And we'll pick the winners and announce those in the final episode. Uh, strategy for success was, we, we covered that. Yep. Dad joke. There's a dad joke in there. I must have overlooked it. 
I was helping you and Jesse do homework. I know. <laughs> don't when be I, scared of negative numbers. When I, I don't mind helping him do homework and stuff like that, but when it comes to geometry and graphing, that's where I draw the line. Wow. A little bonus. There. A daily double. <laughs> a daily double. That's something like two negatives make a positive. Yeah. Because two bad dad jokes make... Yeah, we're back to even now. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get out of here before he tells another one. Yeah. Comment below. Thanks for joining us. Thank you to our sponsors, uh, Yeti, Mountain Ops, Baku, and the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Uh, be sure and support them. Tell them thank you. Tell them you enjoy Destination Elk because we've got some big plans for next year's Destination Elk series. And we'll, yes, we'll share a little more as we get into the series here, but it's, uh, it's going to be bigger and better than ever. So make sure and tell the sponsors thank you and uh, get them back on board so we can make it bigger and better next yeah. year. Do you dream of going on a do-it-yourself elk hunt but don't know where to start? Or have you previously hunted elk but failed to fill your tag? Are you simply looking to increase your success and become a more consistently successful elk hunter? If you answered yes to any of these questions, the University of Elk Hunting online course is for you. Click here to learn how the University of Elk Hunting online course can help you maximize your elk hunting success.